Hi guys, this is Megan with the blog WilsonHomster.com and today I wanted to do a little update on the GAPS diet. So a few videos ago I shared with you guys that I was starting the GAPS diet. I went over why I was doing it and what I hoped to see from it as far as results and then also a little bit about what the GAPS diet is. So I have been on it for two months now, uh, well about two and a half months and I'm excited to let you guys know how it's been going and any results I've been seeing and let's get right into this video. We started this diet at the beginning of the year, so January 1st. We started the GAPS diet. I went through the whole intro diet, which is six stages. I explained more about that in my last video, and I'll link some more videos about the GAPS diet down below. The YouTube channel Bumblebee Apothecary has some really, really good info on the GAPS diet, so if you're curious any more about it, I don't have that many videos on it yet. If you're curious to know sooner what exactly it is, you can go check out her videos. Otherwise, I'm planning on doing a bit more of a series about this. So I moved through the six stages pretty quickly just because you, you're on each stage until your symptoms clear up. So you kind of have some die off when you add in foods from the next stage. You'll have, have maybe upset stomach for a couple days. And then once your upset stomach clears up or whatever other symptoms you've been having, you move on to the next stage. So I. Some of the stages I never even got an upset stomach from the foods I was adding in so I was pretty happy with how quickly I was able to move through it. So it was about a month, maybe a little more than a month, I was on the intro diet and then once I made it to the sixth stage I transitioned over into what's called a full GAPS diet. So there's the intro diet, that's the six stages, and then the full GAPS diet. So right now I'm still on the full GAPS diet and it's been about a month and a half on that. I'm planning on being on that for a total of two to three months and then hopefully transition over more into a Weston A. Price diet. So we'll add in more grains, but only if they're properly prepared and fermented. If we're having rice, they'll have to be soaked overnight in some sort of a, in either whey or apple cider vinegar. If we have bread or anything like that, it'll have to be sourdough bread. So if we, when we do add in those things again, it'll be a lot more they're gonna to have to be a lot more specific and prepared better. So one of the things I was hoping to see with this diet was a little bit more regulation of my thyroid. So I have Graves' disease, which is high thyroid. And after I had Vivian, my third child, who is seven months old now, my thyroid went way up high and then it shot way down low. It was like way too low. And that's about when I started the GAPS diet. And since starting the GAPS diet, and I've still been on my thyroid supplements, you're not supposed to keep taking all your supplements. There are certain ones you can take on the GAPS diet, but I still had to take my thyroid supplements just to manage that. So I kept up with my thyroid supplements, and then on the GAPS diet, my thyroid came back up a little bit. Right now, it's just barely too high, and I'm taking some different herbs and stuff to bring it back down. But I feel like being on the GAPS diet helped bring it back up a little bit. I'm also completely avoiding any gluten or grains or processed sugars and that can really contribute to your thyroid. So all being off all that is just gonna be really helpful anyway. And then hopefully as I just continue longer with having really healthy gut after doing this whole gut rebalancing with the GAPS diet, it will just continue to help my thyroid thyroid regulate. I'm gonna interject here real quick because I realized I forgot about something that I wanted to mention in this video is that I had a lot of detox pain and I didn't know this before doing the GAPS diet was that you detox a lot of toxins out of your legs and your hips. So on the second or third day for a couple days my hips and my legs just hurt so bad and I was like what in the world is going on this is so weird. So I called my sister-in-law who's done the GAPS diet several times and I was like, could this possibly be related to doing the GAPS diet? And she's like, yeah, you actually detox stuff out of your legs and it makes them hurt really bad. So it was a, a lot of Epsom salt baths. So if this happens when you go on the GAPS intro diet, don't be alarmed. It's actually a good thing because you're detoxing stuff out of your body. I thought that was important to mention because it really definitely took me by surprise when that happened to me. <laughs> I was also hoping to see some more weight loss on the GAPS diet and that definitely happened. So after I had Vivian, I during her pregnancy I gained about 70 pounds and normally I lose it within three months because of my high thyroid. But because my thyroid shot down this time, I was like not losing any weight. So. When I started the GAPS diet, I still had 40 pounds to lose and I wasn't restricting anything. I was eating as much as I possibly wanted of each of any of the foods that were allowed. 
I would eat like two bowls of soup for breakfast. Of all the stuff that I could have, I ate a ton of like so much. So I lost 20 pounds during the first month of the GAPS diet and that was the intro diet. And then since then I've lost another 15 pounds. So I've only got like five to 10 more pounds to go before I'm back to my pre-pregnancy weight. I'm feeling really good. I've definitely gotten more energy since doing the GAPS diet, which is really exciting. I was feeling really, really sluggish, which also probably has a lot to do with how my, my thyroid was really low and then it came back up, but I was feeling really sluggish and not very good when we started the diet. And then now I've definitely got a lot more energy. I was also worried about breastfeeding on the GAPS diet because I've heard your breast milk can kind of tank when you are that restrictive on foods. So I was a little concerned about that. I was like, we'll try it. And if my milk supply starts going down, we'll just stop and try again after she's weaned or after she's a year old. Someone wanted to join me. So anyway, I was pleasantly surprised to actually notice that my milk supply went up during the GAPS diet. So I had like a crazy oversupply during the whole time I was on the intro diet. And then only just now of being on the full GAPS diet for a little over a month, it's gone, it's gone back down a little bit. I've noticed that my breasts feel a little bit more normal, not quite so ginormous and full. So I, I, still have, and I still have plenty of milk now, it's just they're finally regulated again. But it actually did the opposite of what I was worried it would do. I was worried it would make my milk supply go too low and it actually brought it like way up. So, baby girl was eating good when I was on the gaps night. Where'd you? Oh, you were eating blueberries over there, weren't you? So as much as doing the intro diet especially was super hard, it was really hard for that first month when I couldn't have any coffee, I had a lot of headaches, I felt really, really fatigued the first week or so. It was so hard. I almost gave up so many times. But I'm really glad that I stuck with it and I've, I've definitely been happy with my results. So if you're struggling with any health issues, especially ones that you know for sure stem from gut imbalance, and you would be surprised how many health issues stem from an unhealthy gut. I highly recommend doing the GAPS diet. One thing I love about it is that it's temporary. So you do the GAPS diet, you go through all the stages, and then you go back to somewhat of a normal diet. You don't want to be eating all the processed crap you'd get from McDonald's or anything. But the end goal is to get back to a more normal diet. So I don't want to just eat soup and broth for the rest of my life. But if I can, if I can just do it for a few months, I can totally do that. It's just, it's a temporary thing to get your gut to a healthier place and then you add in more of your normal foods. I'm planning on doing a video soon of a week of full GAPS diet meals. So I wanna take you through our whole week and show you for, um, I'm gonna do for the dinner, for, for each dinner, I'm gonna film what I'm making, film how I'm making it and just give you some ideas on of some different dishes you can make while on the full GAPS diet because it can be kind of, intimidating when you first start you're like what can I even make on this there's like it feels so limited at first but there's actually quite a lot that you can make so I hope you guys enjoy this video and a little update on it I'm really just happy that we did it and it's done now and we're I'm happy I can have coffee again that was my main thing that was really hard but thank you guys for following along on this journey and I'll see you in the next video bye